From Cape Cod National Seashore, the first with Ironman distances, triathlon, conquering the Cape. It's just a little before 7 a.m. on a Saturday morning as over 100 athletes stand on a sandy beach, nearly naked and soon to be stripped to the soul. Hello, I'm Robin Young, and those are the words that one rider used to describe the endurance test you're about to see. 141 miles of running, biking, and swimming. Now, are those words overly dramatic? We'll find out at the finish line, but here with me at the start is someone who already knows, the promoter of this Ironman triathlon and a triathlete himself, Dave McGilvery. What kind of people are these? I don't know, but I can tell you one thing, Robin. They're, they're really happy, jovial, and I'm a lot more nervous than they are, so I'd rather be in this event than directing it right now. But these people are very dedicated athletes who have a, a very important goal, that is to finish this event. Some will take 10 hours, some 12, some 18 hours. But they're all out here to accomplish one thing to cross the finish line, and we're here to help them. Okay, it is the first time we've had an event like this on the East Coast. Tell me about this particular race and, and the course that we're going to go today. Okay, again, it's, a, it's an open ocean. Ocean water, 2.4 mile swim, starting here at Craigville Beach. They'll swim the course, they'll get out, they'll go to the bike rack, get their bike, and bike from <laughs> Craigville to Provincetown and all the way back again. How many 112 miles? miles. Oh. They'll get off their bike, they'll stretch out a little bit, and they'll be on the marathon run. They'll run from Craigville Beach out to Sandwich, 13.1 miles, turn right around, come all the way back, and finish right here at Craigville Beach. Um, what are the ages of the, the people represented? They range all the way from 18 years old to 50 three years old. And, and male and female. Obviously. Male and female. We have about 15 people over 40 years of age. We have two people over 50 years of age. So we have a real good diversified field here today. Most of the athletes aren't concerned with finishing first. As Shane Hollett discovered, they're just determined to finish. I have such fun. It's a lot of fun. I meet such great people. You've never done an Ironman? Uh, no, I haven't. How do you feel right now? A little nervous. What are you afraid of most? the marathon at the, at the end of the other two events is because I haven't done it. I'm not really afraid of it. It's just an unknown factor at this point in time. The ocean doesn't intimidate you? Not at all. That's, I wish that was longer. Well, I just got married two weeks ago, so she's really happy that I'm finally getting this over with, so maybe we could have a real honeymoon now. Some of these athletes huddled on a beach might just be wondering, whose idea was this anyway? <laughs> The idea to compete by swimming 2.4 miles, cycling 112 miles, and running a 26.2 mile marathon all in one day was born four years ago in a bar on the island of Hawaii. On a dare to see who was the fittest, three rather macho athletes suggested swimming, biking, and running Ironman distances. Well, the event took place among friends and a tradition was born. In 1983, over 600 triathlons took place with 60,000 triathletes going for the finish line. Perhaps this face alone is most responsible for bringing the sport of triathloning into the homes and hearts of millions of Americans. On February 19, 1983, after 12 hours of endurance racing, Julie Moss's legs just gave out on her, forced her to crawl the last 15 feet of the Hawaiian Ironman triathlon. Hearts were touched by the spirit and just plain guts of this 110-pound triathlete. No matter how you look, no matter how you get there, getting to the line is the name of the game. So, God, I felt great. I felt really happy. Um, I have a really nice picture of myself smiling, kind of laid out on the pavement with my hand on the ground. But I finished. My boyfriend does triathlons. And he was gone so much training that it was the only way I could spend time with him. But triathletes like Julie Moss are just a part of a growing breed in a growing sport. Triathletes come in all shapes, sizes, and ages. The oldest known female finisher is a 59-year-old nurse from Kentucky, whose time of 17 hours, 39 minutes, and 6 seconds proved that dedication is as important as ability in just getting across that finish line. But sometimes it's not just the Ironman distances that challenge the spirit of the triathlete. Mother Nature has been known to wield her strength, too. In July, the Portland, Maine mini triathlon saw swimmers being rescued from the icy, choppy waters of the Atlantic. Sometimes determination can only go so far.
my legs just went all numb, my fingers went numb, and I started shaking all over, and I heard people hollering for help all around me, and I said, well, you know, I may be able to go a few more feet, but I better get out myself. So I crawled up on a surfboard and waited for a boat to pick me up. Why do they do it? What motivates someone to seemingly torture their body for 10, 12, maybe 14 hours? Well, there are as many answers to those questions as there are triathletes who say that forcing yourself to the limit, known as triathlon, is a feeling you often can't express, but you will never forget. It's going to be a hot day today, but right now these people have chills, and the chills are from nervousness. Wouldn't you be nervous? Right now, though, they're ready to start the 2.4-mile swim that will start the conquering of the cave. The 2.4-mile open ocean swim starts the Cape Cod Endurance Triathlon, but these athletes have a long way to go before they conquer the cave. schedule. Uh, in Hawaii, the swim times have been around 50 minutes or so. They're around halfway right now, and it's about 25, 26 minutes. So, uh, the way we had one minute. Okay, now how does someone train for something like this? Not everyone has access to ocean water. Well, I think a lot of people that are out there now are probably in the ocean for the first time, which really scares me because swimming in the open ocean is so different from swimming in a pool. Uh, you don't have the uh, size of the pool to kick off. It's chlorinated water in the pool. Here it's salt water. It's open ocean water where you have to constantly look up. So your, your stroke is a lot different in the open ocean versus being in a pool. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are going to get sore necks while they're out there. They're going to be experiencing a lot of other different things. There are jellyfish out in the water that they have to be very careful of. So it's going to be a, a very difficult experience for a lot of people. How is that salt water going to affect them now in, in this swim and later during the day? Well, if they swallow a lot of that salt water, and as you can see, the water is a little bit rough out there, a little bit of turbulence there. If they swallow some of that water, then they're going to feel that while they're out on the bike, especially on the run. So they have to be very, very careful with uh, swallowing water, taking in too much water during the course of the swim. We came down to the shore this morning and made the decision this morning as to exactly what direction they were going to swim. Now, the most difficult direction is the way they went out. We wanted to do that first because they're the strongest at that time. They went out to the left, they looped the buoys there, they came parallel back to the shore. We wanted to keep it in a triangular fashion where they're close to the shore. God forbid anything happened, they'd be close to the shore, we can bring them right in. Why does the swimming go first? Uh, physical purpose is that if you're out on the road, you're running hard, your muscles are tensed up, and then you get into the cold water, you can get serious cramps that way too. So it's very important you get everyone in the water and out of the water as fast as possible. One hour, swimming 2.4 miles. He's out of the water, number two, George Mizzleitis. This was what you expected to do, Ellen, huh? The swimming, that's where yeah, you're most... I do a lot better than an hour. <laughs> Thank you. 
Second in second up, place coming out of the water was Reginald Hahn from, from Columbia, Maryland. And in third place coming out of the water was Michael Haynes from Whitehall, Pennsylvania. And he come out only about a minute after after Reginald. We have results in the women's field. First place coming out of the water was Elizabeth Matno from Boston, Mass. And she came out of the water in about an hour and 27 minutes. We had 40 people out of the water within an hour and a half, which is a good time. Uh, I've been told that the water's pretty choppy out there. When they made the first turn around the first buoy, uh, they were headed into the current. And that 1.1 mile swim up the parallel shore uh, caused a lot of problems. The other major problem that we've been hearing about is the jellyfish. I knew a little bit about it yesterday. Because the weather's been so warm the last few days, the jellyfish has, has been uh, prevalent in the water. And a lot of people, if not every person, it seems like, has been stung by jellyfish, unfortunately. I feel like when 15 rounds of Larry Holmes, my hand's tied behind my back. Come on. I don't know how he gets through the, uh, the goggles that he gets stung in the eye area by a jellyfish. And so it's just a matter of whether or not that sting pain can disappear. If it can disappear in the next few minutes, we'll allow him to continue. If not, then it's too dangerous for him to be out in the bite. I lowered the, the ocean level by an inch till I swallowed. That's my son. I'm proud. Let's go, son. I'm proud. Let's go. Good luck. By now, you're probably asking why. Well, each of the 127 competitors has their own reason. Paul Graham tells us his. I feel better uh, physically. I mean, I couldn't, eight months ago, I couldn't run two miles. I couldn't swim a quarter mile, and I don't think I could bike very well either, maybe five or ten miles. I don't think I'm a particularly good athlete. Um, it's, I count myself as like G.I. Joe, you know, I, I can do a little bit of everything. Uh, I'm surely not a good runner, although I can maybe get in the top half of running. I'm a horrible biker. But I learned, and I try to learn a lot, and I'm comfortable in the water. Uh, but if I come in in the top third, I'd be lucky there. So a year ago in December, I started training. And I trained through oh, five or six months, and I was going to do one in the following January in Hawaii. And in uh, May... Uh, I got diagnosed as having a, a, lymphoma, a lymphoma cancer, uh, which kind of interrupted my training a little bit. Uh, so I had some operations and went through chemotherapy for 12 or 14 weeks. And every day, you know, from that previous December all through my post-operative uh, recovery and all through the chemotherapy as they drain your body energy, Every day I thought about the triathlon. It was something that I started and didn't finish. I do it uh, because it's achievable with a lot of difficulty. Not everybody can, everyone can do it, not everybody does do it. Uh, and I like hard things to achieve for, and I like to achieve them. I used to look at people running on the Charles and I couldn't walk too good and I'd kind of yearn to do it, but uh, I never thought that I wouldn't do it. When I started, you know, I mean, that's like seven, eight months ago. Uh, it, September seems so far away. My goal for time is finished by Tuesday. Uh, it's like Rod Stewart says, never give up on a dream. But don't you ever give up on your dream. Paul, tell me, we're all so excited to get you, see you getting to fulfill your dream, but is it bordering a little bit on nightmare at this point? Well, I sure do wish it was over by now. I started this a long time ago, 
And I think the eyes are all helping me finish it. Well, the leaders are now out of the water and on to the bike group, but they have just begun conquering the king. in my lungs, but <laughs> I'm doing fine, thanks. Dave, what should these these uh, cyclists be feeling at this point? I would think some cramping, maybe. Well, right now, they're at the 30-mile mark or so of the uh, cycle section. Uh, they're coming towards the turnaround. I think that's a big psychological advantage, knowing that they've come halfway out, and now they're going to turn around and go back. The weather, as you can see right now, is getting awful sunny. It's very open out here. Up, coming up towards East Ham and Provincetown. So the heat's gonna be a major factor. It gets a lot hillier out here too. The first part of the cycle section was not that hilly. The latter part of it, at least towards the uh, towards P-Town and the turnaround, gets fairly hilly. As you can see, we're going up a hill right now. So that's something that can be very cognizant of. How much is attitude a part of all of this? Uh, a tremendous part. You'll see some people being very, very frustrated. Other people, like the last gentleman we just passed, said, you said, what, what, what's the most important thing you're worrying about? He said, nothing. Listen, he made the commitment. He's coming out here and doing it. He doesn't want to worry about anything. He just wants to be as relaxed as possible. That's real important to be relaxed in the water, on the bike, and as you're running. Because the more relaxed you are, the less tense you are, the more efficient your muscles are to get out there and cover this extreme distance. What about you? You are responsible for a lot of people here. How are your nerves holding up? Well, I'm afraid of that to tell you the truth uh, a race director takes on a tremendous amount of responsibility unfortunately uh, you know it's a situation where I put in an awful lot of time myself along with all the committee people and we just hope that it goes off uh, in a manner where everyone has a good time but it's in, in more so that it's a safe event we don't want to see anyone get hurt you got you on TV. You're on TV. You're on TV. get it that's my brother Bill hours into the triathlon, the lead cyclists are fast approaching the Provincetown turnaround, 56 miles out. But back in the open ocean, choppy, filled with jellyfish, some very strong swimmers are just now finishing the 2.4 miles. There it is, Millie Brown, ladies and gentlemen, that's her daughter right there. 29 is coming out of the water right now. That is Paul Basho, B-A-C-H-O. You're two hours behind. Can you catch up? No They're problem. <laughs> I'm going to make my move right now. Is that right? That's right. Aim to run a marathon. Like we've seen between the heat and the New York tourists, cycling can be very dangerous. In fact, doing a triathlon can be very dangerous. And we talked to Dr. Hap Farber, a pulmonary specialist and a triathlete, about the risks involved. From the point of view as a physician, I don't know, there are certain people who probably shouldn't be doing this, and there are other people who clearly can physically do this. It's an incredible amount of physical strain. You don't realize it until you try to train for one of these. If you're going to plan on doing one and finishing, would advise you're going to have to think about spending six to nine months to train for one of these things. So clearly you need to start out slowly. The risks involved are obviously the same risks that training for anything. I mean, you're going to hurt, you're going to be sore, there's things like sprained ankles, tendonitis, et cetera, et cetera. And the other thing is that you have to realize when you do one of these triathlons, the day you do it, you're basically destroying your body because your body is really not built to do some of the distances that are 
that are done in these triathlons and you basically break down your body and it takes a long time to recover from this i would expect that if i finish i probably will not be able to move for a week are you feeling that swim at all not really it was rough but that's over i love to see pete down can we hear you you're looking at it oh i am psyched all right I feel terrific. What about this traffic? The traffic's been pretty bad since we got on Route 6. Well, we'll get out of its way. Just because it's a little warm and, you know, just because it's a little uncomfortable and I had a flat tire and a couple of other things go wrong, I'll finish. It's almost noon. It's been five hours since the start of the Cape Cod Endurance Triathlon. These triathletes swam 2.4 miles and are now well into the 112-mile bike ride. And down the road, a full 26.2-mile marathon awaits them. volunteers to put on the race. How hard was it to get people to help you out? Well, anytime you put on a first-time event, Robin, uh, it's new to people. It's new to people here, especially on the East Coast. The whole sport of triathloning is new. You know, the, the uh, town officials are a little bit skeptical about what we're doing because you're getting cyclists out in the road with motorists. It can create a dangerous situation, but what we tried to do is to prove ourselves that we had all the intersections covered, that we tried to do this thing in a very safe way. I, I really enjoy it. Okay, it's... Uh... It's a chance to uh, associate with people who uh, really enjoy life a lot. Having a good time, though. I'm having a great time. I don't know the first thing about a bicycle. How much do the cyclists have to maintain their bike? That's the only piece of machinery. Right. That's the only piece of machinery involved in a triathlon. So therefore, one has an advantage if they have a good operating piece of machinery. So it's up to them to mechanically get that thing into shape where they can have that advantage, to have a light bike to have something that runs really well and also knowing how to operate the bike is very important they may be a powerful individual with a tremendous endurance capacity tremendous cardiovascular system but if they don't know how to shift gears going up and down hills if they don't know how to maneuver that bike then they're going to lose a lot of time out in the road there are some people who think that this event will replace the pentathlon in the Olympics, the marathon in popularity. And maybe it's because there are so many people who can cross train, spread their training over three events, and then take their time and have a good time. One of those people, Dorothy Nist, a teacher and mother of three who knows how to set her own pace. She has guts. I don't think many moms would do that. I think she can do it. Chuck, yeah. Got my chips cashed in, keep trucking, like the do the man. I turned 40 in March. I began running four years ago, and since I began running, I've completed four marathons. I find I do a lot better in marathons than I do in shorter races because I'm pretty slow, but I'm very consistent. Once I find a pace, I can stick to it. And I think that's why I got into attempting triathlons, because the idea of just going for hours and hours really appeals to me. When I'm working, I'm usually home by 3 o'clock. From 3 to 6 every day is my time. After that, I feed the kids, we do the homework, we do whatever needs to be done. The kids are very supportive, they help a lot. And they just know that my day begins with them at 6 o'clock. Realistically, I think I can complete the triathlon in about 14 hours. You have to make time for yourself. 
You have to just realize that one, two, or three hours a day belongs to you. And the best way to use it is by doing something that's going to benefit you. I'm going to cheer her on. Yeah, I'm going to cheer like heck. <laughs> Hope she can make it. Dave, a guy from Cleveland just came by, and, and as he cycled by, he said, I didn't know that Cape Cod was so hilly. It's not hilly to us, but what's this like, uh, this course for the cyclist? Well, the beginning section of the course is fairly flat, but out here by uh, Provincetown, out by the dunes, it is fairly hilly. So um, a lot of them didn't expect that, but when they get out here, and also you see it's very open. So with the sun coming down, beating down, they're going to be more susceptible to heat prostration, so they have to be very, very careful. Every mile, it gets stronger. We feel more and more psyched up about it every time. And just, just for him to finish, it's like he won. It gives us a thrill to follow him, you know, because he's psyched himself up for it. And he's gone through all this, you know, coming out of that water today was a torture. Really? And he's done it. It's that simple. He's and we're going to stay with him to the very end, all the way. The thrill of victory is probably not the only thing the first finisher of the 112-mile bike race is feeling. George Mazalaitis does it again and comes in first with a time of 6 hours, 19 minutes, and 3 seconds. Stanley Moraski comes in 19 minutes later. Bill Coulter is 60 seconds behind him. Whether you're beginning the marathon or biking 112 miles, it's still 99 degrees and there's no escaping that sun. I just had to lead a fellow triathlete into a restaurant and give him some money and set him down. He was totally out of it. The lake started cramping up a little bit and it went numb on me. I, just, I wasn't getting any power out of it. It started hurting a lot, so I just came off and see if I could loosen it up. It didn't seem to be doing much. No, I'll make it. Yeah? Yeah. How are your legs doing? My legs are fine. I overhydrated and I have too much water in me and I just feel... Uh, Kind of At this point in the race, muscles are aching. Despite the bananas, potassium and spirits are running low. Thoughts of quitting lure the desire to finish. Some bikers are in the breakdown lane. She's feeling a little bit down, but the fact that she's second overall in the women's division is probably has to be an uplifting for her. But now she's thinking about what I got to do. I have to run a marathon. After getting off the bike, the bike to run transition is the most difficult part of any triathlon. Your legs are very weak, your quads are very weak, and now you have to think about mentally going out there and running 26.2 miles. It's something that's very mind-boggling. Physically, she's going to have to really dig deep, deep down inside and pull it out. And she seemed a little disoriented when she came, and she had a hard time remembering where her sneakers went, which was on her feet. Uh, is that common? Well, I think that because of the heat, too, she's dehydrated. She's lost a lot of water. So as a result, you know, she gets that type of anguish that goes on mentally, and she gets a little bit disorientated. But uh, what's going to happen is she'll get out, she'll start running after two or three or maybe four miles, and she'll get into the groove, and she'll start running along pretty well but then there'll come that point where inevitably the wall will come but the wall comes a lot sooner in a triathlon than a marathon the wall will come maybe 13 miles instead of 21 miles and you're going to suffer for the rest of the way and that's when you are totally deprived when you've used up just about everything tell me about that i'm imagining that resources are pretty much gone at this point well that's why it's very important to eat on the bike and drink on the bike uh, some people can't do that on the run but it's very important while you're out on that cycle to replenish all the potassium and all the electrolytes 
plates that you're sweating out and burning up on the cycle section and that you have enough fluids in you uh, during the run section of the event. What about some of the other feelings of pain? I'm thinking that this is the first time that they've sat up straight since about 7 o'clock this morning. Uh, how's, how's that feeling? Well, that, you know, every, every muscle in body is probably aching right now. And then again, to think about the marathon. Uh, but that's, they, they knew about it. They've been training real hard. hard. They're used to it. They're acclimated to getting off the bike and starting to run. They might not be used to, obviously, getting off the bike and knowing they're going to run 26 miles, but that's what it's all about. Dave, I know you've heard from people who criticize this kind of event about the, the thing I want to ask you about next, which is there's sort of a sideshow aspect to all of this. I mean, there are people here cheering people on, but there are also people here to watch people suffer. Well, you know, you go to a hockey game, you see fights. People want to see that. You go to a lot of different events. You go to a boxing match, you want to see people suffer. Um, I'm not saying that's what we want to see here. What we want to see here is that whole adage, that cliche, the thrill of victory. And what you feel when you cross that finish line is bigger and better than any suffering that you can, you know, feel throughout the entire event. It's such a long event. Can you get into it too far that maybe you just, you, you're less likely to quit it? You know, real good point because there are points where in one sense that you lose all your comprehension of what you're doing. So as a result, just that whole the whole magnet effect of drawing you, wanting you to stay out there, takes over this when intelligence should always play a part in any endurance event. I've always said there's two, ty the two types of pain, a challenge and pain and a wanting pain. It and it's the intelligent in athlete that can distinguish between the two. Hey, how are you? Paul, stupid Hi. question, how are you feeling? Oh, I feel terrific. <laughs> now, really, how do you feel? I feel good, I'm in control. You look great, how do you feel? I feel fine, my knees are a little sore. Other than that, I feel great. Question, Teresa, why are you doing this? Great going, Eddie. If I train so damn hard for it. Question I can't seem to get uh, the same answer for twice. Why are you doing this? Um, combination of uh, middle-aged uh, menopause, I suppose. Um, how old are you? And thanks that I'm alive. Um, I'm 39. You're the son of one and the friend of many others we've gathered. How does that feel to have that support? Oh, I love it. I need it. <laughs> Supports the whole thing. There's ben one, ben Robin. He's going to win ben one. Ben Don't ben worry ben about ben it. I got to say, you win one. Ben okay, here we go. Oh, ben 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 What percentage of these runners will actually run the entire marathon? They'll run the first four or five miles at a very painful pace. They'll probably run the first few miles slower than they, win the, they will the middle miles. And then all of a sudden they're going to be totally fatigued. They're going to be fighting the urge to quit. And they won't quit, but they're going to have to walk some. Mm -hmm. These people have trained too hard to quit. And they'll stay out there all night long if that's what it takes. Feeling good on the bike, but the quads are starting to hurt now. So I'm just going to just head back into town. I don't know. It's going to be a long walk back. <laughs> This race here has got to be one of the toughest around, equal to Hawaii at least. Your legs are cramping on you? Yeah, I feel great, but my legs are cramped. I'm in a lot of pain. That's why I'm not running. <laughs> Have you done these before? No. First one. You gonna do it again? I don't know at this point. What keeps you going at this point? I mean, it's you know. Well, I'd really like to finish. You know. Is it just something inside you that keeps pushing you on? Well, my family's at the finish line. I can't quit. <laughs> I got a little bruise when a woman hit me with a car and a bike. Uh, it was kind of sore for a while. It was kind of pumped up, but uh, right. it's better now. Body right now feels like it would rather be somewhere else. Uh, swimming the bike was fine. It was fun. It was a little, it was hard work. Definitely didn't look forward to doing a marathon right after that. It's, uh, it's something I wouldn't do more than one or two times a year. Thanks a lot.
The world record for an Ironman triathlon is nine hours and eight minutes. Not far off that and not far from the finish line is George Mathelitis. George, how do you feel? Like I want this to end. <laughs> You're awesome. You're awesome. You surprised everybody. That's great. Come out of the water first. The swim was real tough. A lot of people got hurt. One guy got stung in the eye. So he, he got taken to the hospital. He stayed there for three hours and came back out and he's out on the road right now. He knows you're in the lead. You're inspiring him. You're doing a great job, John. Mazzalitis, the man who never ran a marathon, is the first to finish in 9 hours and 47 minutes. Gary Passler takes second place at 10 hours and 12 minutes, and Andy Rogovin places third with a time of 10 hours and 19 minutes. The first iron woman to cross the finish line is Debbie Perry with a time of 11 hours and 58 minutes. Elizabeth Martineau and Teresa Malloy are not far behind placing second and third. Oh, my race is blown. I don't have a chance. But uh, I guess everyone else was up against the same conditions I was. And it George Mitchell is good, John. The winner, 1983, came to getting harder to see them, but some runners just beginning the marathon are passed by others in the last few miles. It's no longer a cliche. This is the loneliness of the long distance runner. It's here that the legend of the triathlon had built. It's sunset. They've been going for 14 and a half hours. It's a long, dark road, and there's nothing to win. There's no trophies, there's no medals. It's a lot of pain, and yet they keep on going. Perhaps the only thing that keeps them going is something inside. It's a spirit. We don't understand it, but we cheer it on. I had a bad day. Listen, do you think that that's just because of where you are, that you've just uh, done so much? Do you think that's just because of, you know, the wall or whatever it is? Nah, I wasn't. I didn't feel good right from the start, from the swim. I could tell it was going to be a long day when I got out of the water. I'm a few things. Like what? I'm an alcoholic and a drug addict. So, recovery. You're not kidding. Yeah. Is that what you've been thinking about? Well, you know, uh, I've been a program for three years. You know, I've been one to stay in your life. You know, you got higher power. you will guide me through. I feel nicer about myself once I get done. I hope. I know you have three three children. What what is what do they have to do? Well, they're pretty much taking care of themselves a real lot because they don't have time to do a lot of the things. They help a lot with the chores. And they've just been really great throughout the whole thing. I'm feeling guilty? No. <laughs> My face is fine. It's all numbed up. So I got the sting early in the swim. It threw me all off. It devastated me. And, uh... And it really hurt, really hurt there. I was really disoriented. Someone it was time to go, I called a cab. Sitting outside the emergency room. I looked at my girlfriend, she looked at me. I said, what are you doing? She said, you'll make a good story. <laughs> I said, I'm going back and I'm doing it. You light up my life. Wonderful. Don't ask that question. I might think about it. <laughs> oh, God, it's... our heart goes out to you. Come over this side so you don't get run over. Hey. Oh, I've been hoping that would happen. <laughs> <laughs> what, that you'd get run over? Yeah. And they're 
it like for you when you crossed? Yeah, what did he feel event. like, do you guess? What does it feel the, like to see that finish line? Well, to right tell you the now. truth, everybody that crosses the finish line, to me, I feel very, very proud, again, to be a part of it. People come up to me and they He's said to me, just thanks for giving me the chance to prove to myself that Harrison I could do it. Robert, that means more to me than being able to cross the finish line myself. This has to be one of the happiest days of my life right now. Chasing after you. No, I got you. I'm much too tired. <laughs> Thank you. So, what's your name? Robin. Thank you, Robin. So nice to meet you. Thank you. You're public. Congratulations. Great job. Thanks, Chef. Thank you for the pass, by the way, but the gentleman was here to pick up the truck. Yes. And obviously, he realizes I'm not getting off. Thank you. Oh. Don't put on TV that I said I wanted to get hit by a car so I could get out of this. <laughs> People won't think it's fun then. But it was hit the ball. It's almost as good as a martini. Paul Sullivan, ladies and gentlemen, Belmont. Great going, Peter. Oh, as Steve Martin would say, I'm just a lonely guy. <laughs> you look right there. But I'm going to finish, or they'll have to scrape me off this road with a putty knife. Look at him come. Jack O'Doherty. Oh, look at him. Look at him. He was treated this morning with a severe jellyfish hit from the hospital. He was treated up for the best thing of the day. Everybody else finished the fight. Came in here just about last on the bike. Couldn't believe it. His run was as strong as the men. And he said, I'm going to do it. I mean, he did it. He did it. Oh, Jack, oh, long way from the hospital, huh? Look at this. Every time I got done, looked at that. That kept me going. Beautiful. That son of a gun did to me out there. Here he is. They ran around the corner. How are you feeling? I don't know. Lousy. Uh, you know, just tired. Tired from the waist down and numb from the waist up. I feel tired, but I'm happy, and I'm really pleased with the crowds.
This has been a Sports 7 special.